Hello and welcome to the Jimbo Fisher Show. Tom Block and Coach Jimbo Fisher. The news is good for a second straight week. Coach, uh, we knew going in that you were going to be, uh, you know, you were going to outman Savannah State, but congratulations nevertheless on the win and the way your team played. Really a crisp performance in a 55 nothing game that was shortened. It really did. I, I, we challenged our team to prepare well, to come out and start fast, do the things they were supposed to do in all three phases. I was very pleased with that. We were able to execute good things in the running game, good things in the passing game, defense dominated the line of scrimmage, and our kicking game did a really nice job. It obviously, the way the game ended is probably unlike any game you've been involved in, but uh, ultimately, uh, you know, Florida State gets it an easy win, 55 nothing. but it was a little bizarre there that we didn't uh, finish, went to the running clocks and it was that sort different. of thing. It was different. I, I'd never been a part of that, but, you know, that, that's, that's what they had decided to and, and, and appropriately do with the weather and the, and the officials and all the administrative things, and you know, we, we abide by whatever they want to do, but, uh, you know, it, it was probably – you may never have another one of those the rest of your career. Yeah, as it is, uh, the game gets uh, called, if you will, at the midpoint of the third quarter. We will have plenty of highlights for you, though, starting with the first quarter highlights when we come back. So stay with us on the Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T. The Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. By the Florida Lottery, proud sponsor of FSU Athletics. Welcome back. Let's get uh, back at it. Florida State, Savannah State. Coach, uh, the thing that's impressed me, one of the things so far through the first two weeks, you guys have, have been crisp. You've shown up. You've, you've played well. And certainly, I, I, I'm sure that the coaches worked on making sure that you respect your opponent, stayed focused going into this game. We have, and that was a challenge for our team. And, and no matter what, our life of a game is one week. And all you can control is the week, that game, that week. And that's what we're trying to focus our kids on to understand. We have another big week coming up. But, you know, that week of Savannah State, that's what we had to focus on. That's what we had to do. And our kids did a nice job of that. Yeah, and, uh, and obviously the way you came out, I mean, uh, it was efficient from the get-go. And E.J. Manuel looked really sharp. He really did. He, he was making good decisions. They, they were trying. We thought they might try to bloop one, but they tried to hit it to the corner and end up kicking it out of bounds. But we got great field position out of it. And, uh, you know, we're able to uh, start with good, you know, that's the whole key. We've got a little flash up here. I like to see him do a little quicker. I see one of those guys break one of those tackles and take one. But Rodney Smith had a nice day. Rodney had a nice, a good start here. We get a little play action underneath. We had some underneath routes, but they, they left us one-on-one -on -one over top on the post. I like CJ lay that out. It was into the wind just a little bit, and we had told him maybe take a hair air off of it and drive it. But he hung it. Rodney went and made a nice play. But uh, he ended up making a great read going to uh, – his deep ball, when they went in quarters, we had a post alert situation on that particular play and uh, give us a chance to hit a big one. And Rodney did it and finished it. It was real nice. It was a good start. He, he read it. I, we didn't know if we'd get that on the first one, but it ended up being that way. Here, defense did a nice job. They had a nice sprint. Almost, they had a little, they got that ball up. They could have got, got that right there and got a little start. But then we started covering uh, Xavier Rhodes. I thought really had a couple nice breaks. Almost had a couple picks on that sideline over there. Mm -hmm. He's gotten off to a good start for you. Oh, and there's, somebody got a sack again. <laughs> <laughs> that going 95. He ended up having a good, but he saw Tank Carradine coming right there, and he actually forced it into where Bjorn was. And I thought Tank did a nice job for his first start. Here's Chris Thompson again making a nice run, breaking a tackle, and uh, getting three or four yards there. That uh, I thought our line did a nice job. We were Chris for the most part here playing high percentage. They were down, has covered down the field, dumping the ball off to Chris. See, that's the thing about Chris. He's always where he's supposed to be. He's that safety valve. He's that outlet that gets you out of plays, and all of a sudden he can take that ball and make a big play. Here, we made a concerted effort. We want to make sure Kelvin got the ball. And I'm going to tell you, now this guy is really starting to come on. I'm very pleased with him. He's got, people don't realize, even for a big guy now, he's got tremendous speed and ability to make you miss. Nice block here by Lonnie Pryor on the stretch. Good job by Kelvin there. Got the edge. And now Chris needs to protect himself in the corner of that end zone because the guy, you know, they don't know if you're in the end zone or not. And don't let up. That's where you can get hurt again. I like to see him drop near leg, near shoulder, and stay protected. But Chris got his first touchdowns for more than over a year. It was great to see him get in the end zone. Really was. He's run hard these first two weeks. Oh, extremely hard. Been in there. They tried a little trap play up inside, and we blow it up. Everett Dawkins and uh, Telvin did a nice job getting up inside right there, and uh, I thought our front did a really nice job again. They kept in the spread. They kept there. They don't know, get a little option. Now, Christian Jones broke in that. He did a nice job of beating the tackle over the top and getting out there on the option, and uh, you know, that's one thing Christian can do. He is a great space player for a big guy. 
Great space player. Both his tackles were tackles for loss in the game. Yep. All right. They had to try to get a draw. Bjorn and uh, Telvin getting back in there. They tried to. You no. Know, again, you got when you rush the passer, you still got. You know, it's hard to say play the draw and rush the passer. But but you know, Bjorn has a great knack of that. Here they get a nice punt. Uh, we got some good blocking right here. Rashad made a nice play. Be careful of a clip right there. We're lucky we missed him. Got it up inside one cut. We were trying to hit it right there, and the guy came off and he caught right, right on James Wilder's foot, but they would give us great field position. Nice job by uh, Rashad again, making the first guy miss, and you got to do that as a punt, punt returner. But uh, we're, getting, we're getting nice returns. We're getting nice returns here. EJ in the pocket, setting, setting. Nice curl route right in here to uh, Greg Den, who I said has been having a great camp. I'm very pleased with him. And, uh, you know, EJ did a lot here, reading back and forth to front side, back side things. Chris Thompson making that guy miss on a stretch play up inside bound, just always getting those two or three extra yards. Here, EJ, he made a nice check off here, got into our slant, saw, and saw a certain coverage, and he checked it off. And Greg did a great, great job getting inside. We stuck that ball right in the body. Because in the goal line now, you're not going to be open by much. You've got to catch those real tight catches where those guys are hanging on you and grabbing on you. And Greg did a real nice job right there. I'm glad to see Greg getting the end zone. He's getting rewarded for that good play he's been having. Dustin, I thought, kicked the ball extremely well all night. Kicked most of the balls out of the end zone for no return. I think they returned two balls on the night. And I did a nice job. Here they are. They got a nice corner route. We got double coverage and forced a high-low throw there that uh, they had to throw it out of bounds. Now, there's Tank getting a good rush coming back inside. They're getting rid of him. Now, I tell you, what, Nick, caught Nick Air. He, he was in good position, just got a little flat-footed. Now, you got to be careful not let somebody get behind you. He's going to get challenged a lot more here coming up, I think. Because they have some teams that can throw that ball, and they're going to challenge our corners more and more. Great job by uh, Xavier knocking that ball down. Here they go, get a nice punt again. I thought Rashad did a real nice job of getting square on the ball this week. The ones he dropped last week, he didn't get, he didn't get square as far as he took his eyes off of it. Again, another nice return, sets up great field position. Tell you what, you keep winning that field position battle in, in the special teams, it's huge now. He's pretty electric in space. He really too. is. He really is. And he likes doing He's fearless. Uh, he's a very good football player. Here we are. We had, some, we had a couple routes called on the other side. EJ Red coverage wanted to work the back side of the, of the route and did a real nice job. Found Kenny Shaw on a nice corner route there. Here we get a fade route. They're in a tough outside leverage coverage, but we knew Kelvin. Great throw from EJ as far as kept it over his shoulder and let it be a jump ball not thrown into the defender. Kelvin used his body and went up high and caught it at his high point. He does a real nice job of that. Watch how high. So he gets it up at his highest point, uses his frame, got his body in position, got his hips on the guy and used his size and his uh, mass. To help on that. that's the best way I can describe it. <laughs> I mean, I, that, that's a weapon. There's not a lot of six six DBs that are going to be out there. Exactly right, and that's six six two forty. That's not six six two hundred or one ninety. Yeah. Great kickoff again by uh, Dustin. Did a nice job on the night. Here they get an option. They get us cut off here. You know we can't let that. Great play by Bjorn, but Seven's got to get over the top of that. Our corner support did a nice job right there. We're coming back inside. A good job on the trap is Everett Dawkins. You know, Ant McLeod got his first play in time again. He had a couple plays in the game and did a real nice job. It's great to get him back in there. You see him holding up the middle right there on the screen. They're getting wadded up, and all of our guys are getting to the ball. 7:30 when Derek, I mean uh, Terrence Brooks and uh, Telvin Smith, and uh, you know we did a nice job of reading that right there. Again, nice high punt by them. We're getting back. The one of these now. That's the one we did not square the ball up. We got uh, Tyler Hunter in the game, who usually does is the most shorthanded guy. And uh, he did not square that ball up and let the wind get a hold of it. The wind was at his back. Gave a little bit late fair catch. I think he was getting a little greedy wanting to return and, uh, you know, didn't, didn't do a good job there. Here we had a little uh, stretch play back in here to Lonnie Pryor. Again, made a couple, two or three really nice runs on the night. Blocked extremely well. Didn't get a lot of plays in the game, but uh, did what he was supposed to do, like always when he's in the game. And the four wides, we're reading it. Here we saw Kenny, we had, we had something down the field and checked it off down to underneath guy and you know, just keep picking six, eight, nine at a time if one of those things down the field aren't there. Here we got a nice bow. Missed a block right here. They had a miscommunication between 12 and 84, how the combination. They thought they were going to block that play and very disappointing ended up on negative play on a bubble play, which we should never have. We had numbers on. Here they come on a blitz. We get a side adjust, get the ball out. EJ read the blitz extremely well and got the ball out before the blitz got there and uh, hit our hot receivers. Here we got a nice stretch play on a third and two. Uh, we got the mic over. Lonnie ended up cleaning it up and, and got a nice block, and we're picking up our short yardage is a lot better. He was your leading rusher, 69 yards on the ground. Yeah, it's real nice. That's a nice run right here. Lonnie gets it. We get a great job by Trey Jackson. That right side, him and Menlik Watson doing a great job. I'm Austin Barron playing at center in this game, along with Matias and uh, you know Cam Irving doing a nice job up front, along with Happy, like Kevin Happy to get his first start. Here, EJ. We had a confusion on a route over here, and it broke loose late. EJ did a nice job of keeping his eyes up on a third down and converting it. Here we get a nice uh, trap play up inside to uh, Devontae Freeman, who was, you know, he runs, he, believe it or not, he runs great in between those tackles. His body size, that quickness and strength, he's got that, 
he got that little knack to stick it up in there and makes a nice uh, touchdown run here, and it's uh, great to see him get in the end zone. So we run a little tackle trap, got the ball up inside, and uh, good finish by our offensive line, good hard run by Devontae. Again, nice kick. Missed this one just a little bit, I believe. Kept it a little bit short. We got to, they got to the seven, got under just a hair, but there we go. We're covering extremely well. They didn't get it to the 25, you know. When you kick it out, it goes to 25. It got to the 21. That was good. There we go. Niall Lawrence in there, stay, get, doing a great job inside. Uh, great to see him in there, him and Eddie Goldman in the game. You saw Giorgio Newberry there and Tajman in there. And then later on, we got Chris Casher and Mario Edwards in the ball game, And uh, we had that all-freshman front, and it was good to see those guys. Yeah, when you have, uh, you know, such a wealth of defensive linemen that uh, even with some guys injured, it's, it's uh, you know, that's why you recruit that way. You have to. Injuries are going to occur, and you have to create the depth. And these teams that we're going to continue to play the rest of the year, there's no huddle teams, no spread teams that throw the ball a lot. Those D linemen get tired, and we've got to keep a constant rotation. We're going to be able to keep pressure on that quarterback. 35 nothing after the first quarter. E.J. Manuel goes 11 for 13, 161 yards and three touchdowns. Had a drop and then a throwaway with some pressure, so it was efficient. He really did. He, he played great. He did the things he had to do. Again, managed the game, got us in now the right plays, making good decisions. I like his demeanor and what he's doing with the football right now. The big play of the first half presented by AT&T. It didn't take long. It was the second play from scrimmage, uh, the long 60-plus yarder to Rodney Smith. Yeah, it was. We, we had a little option right underneath with a post over the top and, you know, didn't know if it would be there or not, but, you know, we, we wanted to play it out. I had big play opportunity. If it was there, they were in the right coverage. EJ read it. Uh, they, they jumped the option route, and we got to post to Rodney, and we were able to convert it. He's caught a pass now in 27 straight games, and, you know, you have so many receivers. I don't want to say he's a forgotten guy, but you can spread it around so much that it's uh, – Exactly right. You're, and, and Rodney, just he's just steady at it. He's just always there, and all of a sudden he'll make those big, long t touchdown catches. Well, certainly a great start in the game for Florida State, and as a result, a, a lot of the starters would not see any action uh, as the game continues. Mm -hmm. We will get back to the highlights, though, a little bit later on. So stay with us as the Jimbo Fisher Show, presented by AT&T – continues right after this. The Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Florida Department of Transportation. Drive sober or get pulled over. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. It's time for Inside the Helmet, presented by Napleton Infinity of Tallahassee. Um, I'm Kenny Shaw I'm from Orlando, Florida. I'm an upcoming junior, and I play wide receiver. Nah, I just go in the training room, cut a half sleeve up say my prayer and go out um, before anybody. That's, that's pretty much it. It's so many of the guys, that's all they do when we out there, but pretty much Shaw Dog, uh, cutoffs, because I wear cutoff jeans, uh, Swag Daddy, whatever you, just a lot of nicknames. Uh, my favorite moment was coming back uh, to play in Clemson, uh, Death Valley, because everybody thought I was going to be out about a month. I know the doctor said about two to, uh, two to uh, six weeks, and I, I just had in my, my, my head that, I would, that was too long for me. So my best moment was just coming back out there, being able to play again, and actually getting the TD. Uh, it's actually better now because, I mean, not only because our talent-wise, it's because how how close we are, like, as a as a family. And that's all you need with uh, with a group like that, not necessarily talent. But talent-wise, we got, we got it all over the board with what you need. We got speed. We got uh, possession wideouts. We got guys who who just going to um, go deep, and they're they going to get it. But I'll say because we're so close now. And that connection that I, I just like it. Kobe Bryant, and I still do to this day because he's just a great player and all the stuff that he, he goes through, he, he still finds a way to get the job done. And I really look up to him, even though he, he didn't get me my ship this year, but I still look up to him.
the first play that I got in the Wake Forest game freshman year. That that I think that said said a lot about me and to the uh, FSU fans that no matter what this kid is gonna get the job done. And I remember the I remember the play the uh, play exactly. It was honestly I was so mad at that game. I was like, man, I want to play. I just want to get in and just get one catch. I don't care if it's one yard or so. And I just remember coach, it's the end of the game, coach was like, Kenny, you in. And it was uh, 93 Ohio, that's called a play. And, and in play, I do a, a, a just a four yard out with just, I just wanted to catch. But I seen EJ roll out, so I just separated from the defender and got my first touchdown. I, I'm not an emotional guy like that, but I just wanted to cry. Like, I just wanted to do a celebration, but I, it was just like a weird feeling like, dang, I just really scored a college touchdown out of high school. Like, that's how I was thinking. Like, it's just a feeling that I, I'll never forget. Uh, I'll pick Kelvin Benjamin just because if I'm in the dire need of scoring the end, a touchdown, I'm gonna just throw it up to him, and he's gonna go get it. Uh, just a relationship I had with the coach, with the coaches. I mean, it's it's hard when you when you have like over 50 offers and you gotta like put your all your all in one school and and coaches wise. But I just seen that that it factor with the coaches pretty much and. And then with my visit, I, I had fun up here, but pretty much it was uh, my wide receiver coach, Coach Dawsey. I felt like he, he can be like a father, like away from home to me. And he, he actually is. Uh, coach Dawsey, he, he just, he just him. Like if you talk to the other players about him, he just, he's one of those coaches who who gets the most respect just because of what he done done in his career. And I mean, just being coached by him is, is an honor itself. And just the way he pushes you to, he, to a limit that you don't even think you can go to is, he gets my respect for that. I just, I just think that uh, if you got a big heart and you just have a good mindset that you can do anything. So I like to, uh, Send out a message to all the like, young, quick receivers that a hit, a hit is really nothing that, and you should bounce back because if the enemy see you on the ground, then they're gonna think they won. So that's what I like to pride myself on. The Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Florida Fan Game. Want to win a Mazda CX-5? Visit Facebook.com slash Share a Little Sunshine. Camping World of Tallahassee. Best manufacturers. Best floor plans. Best pricing. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher show. 35 nothing after one quarter of play, Coach. And, and obviously, uh, you knew that you were going to outmatch Savannah State. But uh, at what point, you know, did you think you needed to start substituting and how did you handle that kind of going in as the game evolved? We, we had it planned out if we, if we got a good lead, to, I mean, how quick we wanted to get to some things and, and had, a, had, our, had our young guys in and planned and, and what they're going to do and had them prepared and practice so they could execute the things that uh, we wanted them to be able to execute in the game or they thought they could execute in the game, but we had to get them quality reps. And uh, you know, once we you know, got to 35, it definitely was it. 28, we thought about, we said, we'll finish the first quarter right here, give the guys a quarter because you got to get your guys some work. Your body and your, you know, good crowd here too. I, I enjoyed the crowd at the, at the ball game. Uh, but, uh, you know, getting those guys, they got to get quality reps. Here's a great play. Darby's getting great coverage and Tyler Hunter coming over the top, knocking that ball loose. That's what you got to have right there. Guys fighting for the ball and then somebody come knock it loose. Those two guys are going to be a young freshman solving. Keelan Smith, redshirt freshman, I think is going to have a great career here as a, as a corner. Carlos Williams in the ball game. Nick Moody's in the ball game. Uh, getting a lot of those young guys. There's Tajman right there. It was, Ed, it was uh, Eddie Goldman. Jumping in there, uh, and a lot of those young guys getting to play in time. 
There's Eddie inside with Niall for freshman guys. Keelan, great coverage right here. Carlos playing over the top, doing a really nice job. Here they go, getting a little out. Oh, Darby. i tell you what, that guy's going. And Terrence Smith. There's a guy who's really coming on. I'm very pleased with the way Terrence Smith's been playing special teams and, uh, you know, in his backup role as a linebacker. But he's a guy you feel very comfortable putting in the football game. We're on a power play. We missed a back block here. They had a nice tackle for loss right here. We missed a back block. Had a great everywhere else. Clinton did a real nice job in the game here. Checking the ball down to his third receiver out on the flare. It's second about 15. So, okay, let's get eight or nine of it back. Make it a manageable third down. He did a nice job there. Then he comes back on the next play. I think we had a little square in combination with something on the other side. He picks up the square in. Clint's got a real good feel for offense. We're in a little stretch play here. Got a Bob Ayers, there's uh, a couple of nice blocks by our left side. Bobby Hart was in there right there. Uh, Jacob Farron crew that was uh, Smiley making a good lead block right there. Uh, getting him out there. And of course, uh, Devontae getting a nice run. How much uh, different is, is Clint right now than a year ago? A lot different. A lot different. I mean, really relaxed in what he's doing and confident. And before he knew what he was doing, now he knows he knows what he's doing. There's a little bit of a difference, right. and there's a confidence that goes with it. Here we run a little uh, power play up inside, and there's that guy Wilder just banging him around and uh, running very physical. Did a really nice job in the ball game again. Still not on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Here we had a nice stretch play. We blocked everybody perfect. Our right side right there with uh, Daniel Glauser did a nice job. Uh, Reuben Carter at center. Uh, Love Lady, it's, I mean, excuse me, Reuben Carter at guard, Love Lady at center. Uh, that was a Christo at tight end who also got his first catch, a young freshman tight end, Smiley leading on the block, and we make one guy miss at safety, and 32 is able to get in that end zone again. He's got a knack for getting in there. He's powerful, especially for a straight-up runner. He really is. His body, and I'm going to tell you, he's, got, he's, he's a lot looser in his hips than you think he is. I'm tell you what, we had some young walk-ons right here got in this ball game as far as return. Right there, Washington, man, what a nice job. Flying in there, making a making the tackle with him, took, in on, took on a double team and took the ball carry out all in one play. Those guys took advantage of some opportunities they had and was very pleased. Those guys bust their tail every day to give us a great look and do things we have to do in practice and get rewarded by playing time and, and to go in there and play like they're playing. I was extremely pleased. There's, there's uh, Giorgio Newberry. Uh, that guy's got to have a great career for us. I think he's going to be a heck of a player in the future. 6'6", 275-pound freshman, redshirt freshman, I think is really going to be a really good football player for us. Well, and, a, and a key guy with the injury to Brandon, oh, too. Oh, he's gonna the guy's going, yeah, plenty of playing time this year. You're right. We run a little speed sweep here with Kelvin Benjamin. Good block right here again. Making that guy miss. Look at that speed. Like to make sure that ball security. But uh, we get the block, gets 50, 60, 15, 16 yards there, and KB just getting that ball in his hand and really doing some dynamic things. Heck of a good, block, good job by our line of reaching everything right here. DeBrell, DeBrell gets a nice little kick out block here. Got to make sure blocking downstairs, Willie Halstead. And then uh, you better get out of the way, that big guy running in behind you. <laughs> He'll give you a headache. Here, DeBrell running the ball extremely hard up inside, pounding the inside zone play. And uh, as we were just running the inside zone here, we we're trying to be physical. Thought he did a really nice job in the game. Again, here, another one pops it, almost gets in the end zone right here. And uh, we, I was hoping to keep him in the game, but his helmet broke. So he had to come out of the ball game here. And uh, so we put Wilder back in the ball game. Dwayne, again, has a knack for getting that end zone. He's a great red zone, tight zone runner. So that's actually DeBrell's TD there. Is what yeah, saying. yeah, he did. His helmet got broke. And uh, <laughs> James was more than happy to go in there and make that run. But that's, that's a great job. Well, again, just like week one, uh, you can see the wealth of running backs. Everybody brings a little something different to the table. They do. And you're going to need all those guys during the year. And unfortunately, the, the one bad thing of the night, Dustin and I just, just hooked one of those uh, extra points and, uh, you know, and, and then missed one there. And uh, I'd rather get it out of the way here than in, and in a critical game. And a good thing, he got to come back. We scored again after this, and he made a real nice kick and uh, you know, got back in the groove again. He didn't know what to do because it's been so long yeah. since he missed yeah, one. Yeah, it never happened. Exactly. Here's our guys. Here's guys. Look where we're getting these guys down there. Washington, there's Washington again. There's all, I mean, we've got Burnett down in there. There's Tyra David. There's Tyrell. I mean, we've got some guys down there making a lot of plays. Slater down in there, Burnham, Tidmus, all those guys doing a great job. Porterfield was, I think, the original contact on that play. There we go again. We lost contain right there. We can't let that happen. But P.J. Williams in the ball game, all those freshmen, Tyler Hunter. But there's a lot of young guys in the ballgame, a lot of freshmen in the ballgame right here. Uh, can't lose that, Giorgio. A good job right there by Carlos filling out, getting the edge, and uh, playing support right here. There's Nigel Terrell in the ball game. They run. The, they got the little wildcat going. The guy gets a run up inside. There's Big Eddie Goldman getting a touch. And I tell you what, now for a big 315, 20 pound guy, he can move. Again, pressure in that pocket, doing a real nice job here. Guys flying. I like what I like. These young guys even flying to the ball. You see bunches of them in the picture, not just one or two of them. 
Reggie North up in there, boy, I think he's going to be a heck of a linebacker. Run a little naked play, and Christo gets his first college catch right here. Does a nice job. That's what I like to see those tight ends do. When you can't make a miss and there's somebody there, make somebody pay, get an extra four or five yards, use that big body. Now we're in the rainstorm. You know, that's another thing I was pleased that we, we handled the ball in the rain, all that practice we've had. And uh, we may have to play some games in the rain. I thought we did a real nice job there of handling the football in the rain. Well, and handling a 56 or 58 minute delay as you, you exactly know, go into right. the locker room and you got to stay sharp and focused. You know, as crazy as that sounds, it could end up being a blessing for us because those guys, you know, they're Scooter Hagen's on a nice catch. You don't ever know what's going to happen in big games. A couple years ago, it happened two or three times. And who can deal with that? Who can learn to keep the fame focused and not panic on the game and go back out and play? Here we had we made a misprotection up front and had Kelvin out here in a little uh, corner route and uh, and uh, Clint didn't have time to get it off. But here's one night, boy, a great punt right here. I mean, a 40, about a 45-yarder right there by Casey Bay, the one punt he had and pinned it again inside the 10-yard line. Guy's got a great leg. Here we are, nice job. Carlos Williams getting some nice playing time in here again, making tackles. There we go, Eddie Goldman, all those guys. Tyler, look at those guys support the football. Boy, they get to keep the edge, you know, don't let them outflank you and, and get there quickly. So we get to halftime, uh, which was uh, abbreviated for 10 minutes here, 48 nothing at intermission, and I uh, come back out, and, and little did we know we wouldn't end up playing the full second half. Yeah, you're exactly right. Great, but that's a good way to start the second half right here. Got a kickoff, we got it at 25. We end up getting the ball back. Uh, this is a play like earlier. We had the scooter right here, I believe, and uh, you know they. Uh, I think we created a turnover on this drive. I think they fumbled a snap on a shotgun snap here. We get them in a, a second long here. We don't need to jump right there. We got to stay on our feet by our, by uh, Giorgio. That's one thing you don't just keep those hands up and be careful jumping because those guys can pump and get under you. And they mishandled the ball. And I think Tajman Stevens the one jumps in here and gets on that ball and very alert. And we get the ball in the red zone again, and uh, we end up taking it. We have a run. We actually scored twice. We scored once and didn't count, and then we went back the second time. Uh, Kelvin got low. Yeah, see right here, he jumped off. He got low. He knew he had a chance to catch a post right here, and uh, he got low anxious, jumped off sides. We had a little a couple routes inside, and they, they doubled him and left him one-on-one -on -one again, so we were able to get the ball back to him, and he's a great big target in the red zone who runs extremely well, and uh, he had uh, three or four, three catches on the night, and I think two touchdowns, and had a really nice night for us. You really see the extension he gets right there. That's size, boy. I mean, that, that, it's just the size and length and then the ball skills he has. It was tremendous. So we get another stoppage, 55 nothing, and uh, it, it took a little while, but uh, once protocol was, was uh, followed, ended up that the, the game ended at that point. The, yes. the, the statistics count. Yes. Counts as a win, obviously, and that was uh, something you had to be sure of before you made exactly that call. Exactly right. There, there, there was some logistical things you had to go through to make sure that everything was good and, uh, uh, you know, with uh, – the rules to make sure it wasn't a forfeit or anything like that or we, we did anything wrong and then they, they got everything taken care of and you know you'd like to finish the game for as far as getting all those young guys playing time because they practice so hard but we understood that was that was the scenario that we come up with so that's what we did. The big play of the second half brought to you by Xfinity we just saw it we'll look at it again but uh, the post uh, that well it happened twice in the game yeah. he caught both of them to Benjamin but uh, that's really going to be a weapon for you with his frame. we got to keep developing him, and I, I really like where he's going right now. He's practicing extremely well. He, his conditioning is really good. He's hitting some top-end speeds that are ridiculous, I think, for a big guy and his ball skills. And it, it, he's another weapon in, in our arsenal that we're really going to have to have to, to have the kind of year we need. So 2-0 and for Florida State, and these are two teams you were expected to beat. A final thought uh, before we start looking ahead, Coach. Uh, the thing that's impressive to me, only five penalties through two games. Yes. 60% conversion on third down, and you're perfect in the red zone right now. So, I mean, this is an experienced team that played as they should. We do. We talk about controlling the line of scrimmage. I mean, our, our, we're good. our short yardages have been good. Our goal line situation has been good. Convert on third down, score touchdowns in the red zone, and we try to end every possession with a kick. In other words, a PAT first, a field goal second, or a punt third. And on offense, I believe we've had one turnover, which was actually a guy – taking his eyes off the ball in a pass that, you know, hit us in the chest. But uh, for the most part, protecting the ball, taking care of it defensively, doing the things we have, not giving up big plays, not giving extending drives, but getting off the field on third down, but not having stupid penalties to give them, mm -hmm. to give them things. And on, on win the field position battle on special teams, and we're doing those things. Yes, and as a result, 2-0 and so far. The ACC comes next, and we'll preview the ACC opener in just a little while. Wake Forest coming to town. We'll talk about the Demon Deeks a little bit later on here on the Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T. The Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero, real Coke taste and zero calories. Napleton Infinity of Tallahassee.
It's time for Seminole Insider, presented by Hyundai. Inside information for the loyal fan. The Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. By the Florida Lottery, proud sponsor of FSU Athletics. Welcome back, everyone. We're joined by a head chef of Florida State Athletics, Joyce Simons. Joyce, we're going to be making something today, a southern favorite everybody loves to enjoy, but we're making it more nutritious. We're taking on the portion size. Tell our viewers what we're going to be making today. Well, today, Scott, we're going to be making sweet potato pie cupcakes. We're taking EJ Manuel's favorite treat, and we're going to modify the portion size on it so he can enjoy them during football season and st still get the things he loves, but not necessarily all the calories. So today, we're going to make the batter and then we're going to decorate it up. We have um, an egg and some brown sugar. We're going to mix those together until they're all incorporated. And then we're going to add in some good old butter. Nothing like butter, right? Makes, no. everything, makes yeah. everything taste better. It might yes. be nutritious, but that's definitely yes. going to give it some flavor. So after it's all mixed together, we're going to add vanilla and then I went ahead and pureed some sweet potatoes and we're going to add that in because you can't have sweet potato, potato, sweet potato pie without sweet potatoes. It's one of those things everybody in the South grows up loving is sweet potato pie. Yeah. It's one of those things you got you to gotta find some way to enjoy it, I guess, and Lord knows if it were an entire pie, I'd sit here and eat the whole thing probably. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad we're focusing on portion control yeah. today. We're definitely going to make something delicious but with a few less calories. So after the sweet potatoes are together, we're going to add some flour, and then we have baking soda to help it rise, cinnamon, nutmeg, and some salt. And nutmeg is one of those things that makes everything kind of more pungent, I guess. It makes, it makes I guess you get more of the spice really out of the sweet potato. Yeah. So nutmeg helps potatoes taste a lot better. You would never know some of the dishes nutmeg's in but then some lots of potato dishes. And that'd be like a pumpkin pie or something like that. You'd see a lot, of, a lot of nutmeg, a lot of cinnamon in that. Yeah. So we're gonna mix it all together. And then when the flour's together, we're gonna add milk. And once it's all together, I have it right here. We're gonna mix it and I have it in a mixer. So Scott, to make it a little smaller portions, we have a muffin tin here and I already oiled it and then we're gonna scoop them out so this way you know exactly how much you're getting in a portion. I'm gonna scoop them in and then we're gonna bake them at 350 for about 15 minutes or until you get a toothpick that comes out clean. So we have 
the cupcakes done and I went ahead and made a marshmallow fluff frosting. So I took good old fluff here and we whipped it with some butter. Again, great tasting. Gotta love the butter. And then some powdered sugar. And we're just, I put it in a piping bag. You can always use a Ziploc bag at home. And we're just gonna pipe it on. Not too much. And then if you want, Scott, you can dip it in the frost. Or this is graham cracker crumbs right here. You can dip it in that, or you can just sprinkle a little on top, depending how much flavor of the graham you want. Let's, you let's have dip to, it. Yeah, yeah we, we want some you graham cracker You have to have the there. taste of the crust. And this is a way for EJ to enjoy his favorites during the season and not have all the calories. So, do you want to try one? <laughs> do I want to try one? Is that even a question? <laughs> Absolutely. Good. Nutritious, but man, does it taste good. <laughs> Joyce, thanks for joining us. As always, a great way to maintain portion control, but enjoy sweet potato pie, one of my personal favorites. Thanks, Scott. Remember, all of Chef Joyce's recipes you can find right now by visiting Seminoles.com, the official website of Florida State Athletics. All the recipes from all of our great shows are up there right now online. We'll see you back here next week. The Jimbo Fisher TV Show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Florida Department of Transportation. Drive sober or get pulled over. The energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. The Jimbo Fisher TV Show presented by AT&T is brought to you by Florida Fan Game. Want to win a Mazda CX-5? Visit Facebook.com slash share a little sunshine. Camping World of Tallahassee, best manufacturers, best floor plans, best pricing. Welcome back to the Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T. It's time for the ACC opener, a high noon game. Wake Forest comes to town. Yes. And, uh, I, you know, we haven't had this discussion per se, but you talk about a coach who gets the absolute most out of what he puts on the field every week. It's got to be Jim Grove. They do a great job. They're prepared very well. They play very hard. Uh, they have better players. Everybody gives them percentage. It's Wake Forest. Like I said last year, they had three, two or three players drafted before our first player was drafted. I mean, they are a very athletic team, very talented team. People, they kind of, people don't always see it that way, but they are, and they're a well-coached team. Play very hard. They, 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 they win those close ball games. They beat North Carolina last week, 28-27, in a great ball game. Scored late. Did all the things they had to do on defense. Uh, won the first one, 20 to 17. Do it. Jim does a heck of a job. And they've always, you know, one of the things he does, he redshirts guys early. So yes. they've always got experienced guys. I was looking at their defensive depth chart, and every starter's a junior or senior except for two who are redshirt sophomores. So, I mean, they're always experienced guys. Exactly right. And it's kind of what's happened to the craze in college basketball. You can recruit the high-recruited guys, and they come out early. Or those teams, you know, like Butler and those guys that made those runs a couple mm -hmm. years, they keep redshirting them. Those guys are very experienced. They're good players. And all of a sudden, now you've got a great team. Final thought, Tanner Price, third year starting quarterback again, and he's a good one. A very good one. He, he threw for 300 and some yards in the last game against North Carolina. Tell you what he does, it's amazing. And not only accurate, arm strength is very good. He keeps plays alive with his feet. Does a great job maneuvering in the pocket, scrambling, just, just a playmaker. All right, well, we'll have the Wake Forest uh, showdown coming up 12 noon at Doe Campbell Stadium. Come on out, support the Seminoles as they kick off the ACC season. Still a little bit more ahead. Stay with us on the Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T. Jimbo Fisher TV show presented by AT&T is brought to you by SunTrust, the official bank of the Florida State Seminoles. And by Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Fisher's wardrobe. We are back and it's time to uh, ask Coach a question presented by Florida Farm Bureau. This is a, this is a good one, especially when you look at the way college football's uh, evolved. Ryland Click from Claremont wants to know uh, why FSU is one of the few college teams that, that still uses a traditional fullback, or more than that, why has the traditional fullback position gone away at the college level? I think it's because everybody's going to the spread offense. Everybody wants three receivers, four receivers, even five receivers at a time. And, and the lighter backs, you know what I mean? And, and more teams are in the spread. You see, you know, not as many teams traditional. We're, we do some spread things, but we still want to use a fullback and be traditional. And some other teams that uh, come to mind that still do it too, but not as many. And I tell you, that's a great question he's asking. You know, he asked the same question when the, when the NFL scouts and the pro teams come by, they say too, they say we can't find any fullbacks for our pro teams because pro ball is such a different game than college ball. And everybody's spreading it out. Everybody's getting all the wide outs and all the skill guys and they're not playing with, you know, they want fast, athletic guys, and they think a fullback can, can be a hindrance. 
Yeah, well, you've got a good one in Lonnie Pryor. Yeah, we do. Sure. I'm glad we got ours, that's for sure. Coach, uh, quick thought as, uh, as we finish up. Wake Forest, uh, if you will, the preseason is over, the conference season is here, and uh, you won't have to remind your players what happened last year at Wake Forest. No. You guys should be ready to kick we, off at 12 noon. Yeah, we're ready. We'll be ready at 12 noon. Wake Forest is a big game for us. It's, a, it's not only an ACC game, it's an interdivisional game. So it's a double whammy. We need to get off to a great start, get 1-0 and in this conference, and we know we got a great opponent coming in here who's going to be ready to play, and uh, we need to be ready to play, and we will be. All right, sounds good. Best of luck this week. We'll have the highlights for you, of course, next week right here on the Jimbo Fisher Show presented by AT&T. We'll see you then.